Hey guys, thought I would update you today a little bit on uh, some of the ice reports that are kind of around me. I went to Chestermere Lake and Bruce Lake to check the ice depth and um, it's sitting probably between two and three inches right now, which is probably good enough to go fishing on if you're with other people, but on my own I didn't want to chance it. So um, I went to check the canal by Chestermere just to see if I could actually do a little bit of fishing in there and realize that they had drained the canal right now. So took the opportunity to go down in there. I'll show you some images here of uh, the canal that uh, has no water in it right now or very little water in it. And um, I was able to actually get down there and found a bunch of lures. So uh, I'll show you the haul that I collected here in a second. Just thought I'd show you guys the uh, the haul that I picked up here. Um, so I I've lost my fair share of of uh, fishing lures at the creek there, and uh, it's right at the edge of a uh, of a dam for the end of the lake. And then so this time of year, a lot of times they end up um, uh, draining it out. So uh, they they cut off all the water flow out of there and. Uh, I thought, you know what, I'm going to sneak in there and see if I can't find some of the lures that I've lost or see if I can pick up some. It's kind of a funny thing too because sometimes you get that opportunity to go in there and actually find out what other people are using, uh, not saying that they're catching, but what they're using uh, at the at the lake or or uh, in, the, in the canal there. So um, predominantly it's pike that's in there, in that area of the lake. Um, so I'll have um, a lot of spoons that we would use normally in that area. Sometimes we'll use some soft baits and stuff like that, but typically the lures and stuff that we that we do use are more spoons. Um, so I'll show you kind of what I found. Um, so five of diamonds, uh, if anyone's not familiar with that, that's a Len Thompson. Um, this one is the yellow and black. Um, so I found a few of these uh, there. Um, just kind of cleaned them up a little bit. So there's a couple of those. Um, the old Canadian flag on there, which is similar to the devil's eye, I think is what they call it. And this one's a Len Thompson as well. Um, so, I mean, these aren't really expensive lures. They're probably, you know, four or five bucks a piece. Um, so here's another one. Uh, this one's not a Len Thompson. It's a knockoff one. But similar to spoon tight. Um, this one is another one of those ones. It looks like someone's bent it. Um, it's kind of got a different warble on it. And then also they've gone to a single hook on this one, which typically uh, we would all use triple hooks out here. So that's one. Um, then I also have these ones, I believe, are these are Len Thompson. So there's another one. So uh, you can kind of see here a lot of people are using the. Um, the red and white patterns. Um, this one again is a knockoff. It's not an actual Len Thompson, but you know what? Very, very similar. Um, this is the actual five of diamonds. Um, this one again is a knockoff. It's not an actual Len Thompson. You can tell by just the pattern of the way that they've painted them on there. Um, it's, I mean, still very similar, but not quite. Um, so that's another one. Um, and you'll find most times out here where I'm fishing in the Calgary area, when we fish for pike, we'll throw a leader on there. Uh, pike have very, very sharp teeth um, if you've never pike uh, fished before. Um, so when you um, are catching them, sometimes they'll twist themselves back around and be able to cut the line and take off with your hook and obviously some of the line, which is not good as well. Um, then we get into some of the soft baits. Um, so, uh, kind of funny, um, you know, using uh, a drop uh, weight on there, so a jig, and then obviously a, well, this one's garbage, obviously it just broke, um, but, uh, and then a soft, soft bait. Um, so that's one, here's a bigger jig head, so a little bit heavier uh, in uh, the fire tiger um, pattern on the jig head, and this is fairly heavy, this one. 
Uh, you can go either way with this. You can add in extra drops on it. So this one's kind of a good one too. Um, so that one's good. Um, then we get into some of the other soft baits. So this is like a little swim bait again. Um, so this one's got a large hook through it and then just the tail. Um, this one is, I believe, I believe this one is a storm bait, um, which, uh, looks very similar to it. It just, it's, it was probably in there for over a year and it's lost all the coloring on it. Um, so this is a pike pattern. Normally it's just white right now, but, um, these ones, they work fairly well in a lot of areas. You just, um, you have to be, um, typically it has a triple hook on the bottom down here as well. Um, it, they work fairly well. Um, they, uh, you just be careful of the size or the weight. They look like a pike when they're, when they are new and, um, and they're pretty good. So another one of those tough ones. Um, this one here, this is, this is a funny one. This one is actually looks to me like the coloring and stuff. It's, it's lost all of its coloring, but um, judging from the coloring on this side, it looks like it was supposed to be like a brown trout. Um, it's probably a storm bait as well, um, which is uh, a softer style. Um, you know what? They do work as well. Um, I don't typically use those. Um, here's another one. Um, so this is a, a, a weird one as far as uh, the, the actual soft bait itself. It's a curly tail um, with like looks like a little ruffles on the bottom. I, I've never seen one like that anywhere as far as those style go here. Um, but uh, jig head again. Um, looks to me like a homemade weight. We found a couple of these as well, these different weights and some various other things. Uh, some just uh, basically I was picking line when I was out there more so than anything else as well. So, um, but they're all here, some different drop weights. That's a really weird creek to use drop weights on. Um, I find that that creek is very, very rocky, hence all the lost lures. Um, so to use a weight like that, um, I don't know why you would use it there. Um, you, you're pretty much guaranteed you're gonna lose it. Um, then I see a lot of, there was a lot of um, pickerel jigs or, uh, um, or and, and they had a few of these that were on there. I've never seen these ones. They're like almost like a styrofoam or a sponge weight with a, with a lure. And then they've got a, they're, they're pre-tied obviously. So, um, they're tied on there and then they just had it on, uh, there's a couple of them on there and I, f I found a ton of them. I threw most, I use them for ice fishing quite a bit. Um, then one of these. So I think this one is, this one's blue Fox. So number three, um, kind of funny. I, I would have never ever thought to use one of those there. This one would be more for, um, in my opinion, more for trout than for uh, pike. And that lake is, I, I've never caught anything but pike out of that lake. Um, so this is, <laughs> this is kind of a funny one. This is the, I think this is supposed to look like a mouse. These ones are, uh, they're not really, really expensive. They're probably a $10 Canadian uh, bait or lure, I should say. Um, and uh, so this one is one that I found in the rocks as well there. Um, so this one's decent, still in really good shape as well. The hooks aren't rotted on it, um, but kind of a big hook. So um, yeah, so that's one. And then here's another one, kind of the last one, other than a few of these other little um, uh, rigs and stuff. Um, but this is the last one that I found. Uh, it's tube jig, obviously, um, in a, a different pattern. Um, I, I've i never seen uh, one like this before, so this is kind of a funny one. So weighted head. Um, and uh, so that one's kind of a good one as well. Um, I did the video more so for ice fishing, uh, just to see. I, I did want to try and get out ice fish. I didn't trust the weather, it was six degrees Celsius when I went out there. Um, and there was water on top of the ice. I know the ice is probably two to three inches thick, which is uh, deep enough that you can actually walk on it, I guess. Um, don't, I mean, I, I, I didn't want to do it on my own. I didn't want to walk out there. Um, you know, I'd walk around the shore. If I did fall through and I was up to my knees, I'd be okay. Um, but kind of past that, it's just, it's not safe yet. 
uh, to do it on, to go out on the ice and measure and mark on your own. It's always good to have a buddy there just in case and, uh, and a bar just to check. Again, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. And uh, hope you have a great day.